Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sophie, for doing this and for your uh, and for your work and the other um, panelists. Um, uh, I bring um, you know a different experience coming up to this and uh, um, uh, and perhaps a different set of questions to the uh, um, to the w to the questions you pose um, uh, going forward. Because when I focus on who triumphs in the marketing battle of the future, um, there was a temptation to look at camp to think about uh, campaigns. Um, um, and in the United States, in particular, where the uh, because the re there are more elections, there are more resources, it's more corrupt, you know, more polluted. Uh, the you end up with a professionalism in campaigns that uh, allows the uh, social media and other forms of engagement to go that much you know further, and the technology to develop. Um, there are there are ongoing campaigns in which this uh, you know this uh, this matters. Um, I decided that would actually be the least interesting. Uh, place uh, you know to uh, you know to, uh, to go with this, so I'm happy to uh, to go there um, because the w when I'm doing a campaign, I am constantly brought back to Maurice's first question, which is uh, which he just threw out and then went past it, which is well, this is no substitute for ideas. I mean, you have to there's still a beginning idea um, that uh, that uh, that at, at the heart of a brand, at the heart of a country, heart of a Political party, part of a leader. There is there an idea. I'm thinking in a, in a, in a much broader sense than idea, but it, there's some there's some essence um, that uh, that is that has to be adv uh, advanced. And so when I think about the question, I can't in a political context. I can't think about who wins the future, um, a term used by the pr uh, by President Obama. But I can't think about the the subject of winning the future uh, without um, um, thinking of it in a campaign context. And more than that. Um, the I can't do this here because of where we are in Israel, uh, because of most of my work, uh, a great deal of my work is uh, uh, is focused on Israel standing in the world, in Europe, and uh, the United States, um, uh, in China, India. Uh, much work for the Israel Project. Uh, the and so when I think about uh, in that context, the question of brand is constantly part of the discussion. Uh, and indeed, it's hard not to have a discussion in the United States uh, with those who are concerned about Israel's future without it being, isn't this a brand question? Why, are, you know, why aren't we addressing it? We have all these skills. Um, you posed the question at the, out, at the outset here. Can't we just get our heads together and sort this out and, you know, amongst friends and, uh, and, you know, and advance the brand? Um, um, I'm going to argue that there is a, we have a paradigm, I am going to focus on Israel. The mistakes are high on focusing on Israel. We don't have... When, who, when we say who wins the future, um, the future is a short. I'm sure the future is long, but the challenges um, are sh short term, quite immediate, <coughs> that one has to address. We, who wins the future, what choices we make um, matter now. Um, and the brand question is, um, and our techniques, um, you know, are central to our success and whether, you know, and whether we win that. The, my starting point is that there's an, we have a paradox that the brand, that is, this is a very special country. It's reflected in this conference, um, reflected in the president, reflected in this panel. Um, uh, it, uh, it, we are surrounded by great wisdom, smart um, culture, um, technology, um, all of which in the context of the issues facing Israel may in fact make Israel's situation more difficult rather than less difficult. There is a brand that is reinforced by all we, um, all that we do, and I'll try to, I'll, I'll go to my, go back to the campaign context. For me, the starting point in any campaign, um, it has to do with what I'm dealing with a corporate brand, uh, but it's what's, it's my starting point is what's the fight about? What's at issue? What's the fight about? And who succeeds in controlling what the fight's about is the most likely one to be successful uh, in that. Um, contest. If I look at that politically, and I watch Hillary Clinton running a primary uh, around who has the experience to be president, or whether Barack Obama running on who's change, um, we know who's going to win that primary and who's going to be president of the United States. Knowing what the question is about, what the what what the fight is about, um, which means knowing 
understanding the public, understand, resp and respecting the voter. I would actually, usually if they're spending a little time on your issues, it's because they probably rationally should spend that less time on your issue. I, my sense is that the person in campaign who does not have respect for what the voter is thinking and how they're thinking about these problems is gonna lose. Because this, this is about what the, what the fight's about, and if you don't understand that, you don't, you don't succeed in winning or you know, winning the, uh, uh, you know, the future. So that's my, so my starting point is what, the, what is what the fight's uh, about. The, when dealing with Israel, um, as I said about the character of the conference, when we look at the starting point um, for the public, if I look at the polling data in, uh, in Europe or Britain, um, uh, Israel standing is, um, you know, just north of or south of, depending on your scale, of uh, North Vietnam and, um, and Iran. Um, if I look to the United States, uh, Israel standing is um, is much higher. But is um, but if you uh, uh, but if you look across the polarized electorate in the United States, it uh, um, um, faltered amongst Democrats and liberal Democrats. Um, we look to China and India. We, um, the brand actually has much great, has much greater strength, um, you know, there. But uh, in many of the circles where important things get decided, um, these are challenging period for the brand. And so the question when winning the future for me is, what's the core idea? You can't. You have to one. You have to. Uh, we have to assume that these the people who have drawn these conclusions about Israel or about the character of the conflict are not fools. That there's some. That there's something about what they're seeing in Israel and in the character of the conflict that's leading them to that uh, uh, conclusion. The, um, for my work to win that future, and that's what, that's for me winning the future via marketing, and because I work with, these are the people I work with in trying to actually succeed on this, um, um, I'm not a substitute for the folks that are here. We are partners in the, uh, in this issue and many other, in many other issues. We worked together in BP and other places in earlier times. The, um, um, but the starting point is what's the fight uh, about? For Israel, for the, for the Euro if you look to Europe, if you look to United, even the United States, we're looking at a, uh, we're looking at a country that uh, is surrounded by hostile powers, surrounded by, in some cases, con areas controlled by fundamentalist organizations, Iran, uh, we're looking at Israel. We're looking at a um, Israel-Palestinian uh, relation, uh, relationship, um, and what the world sees is a uh, is a asymmetric relationship, a superordinate relationship. Uh, when they look to Israel, they increasingly see Gaza. They see a vulnerable, vulnerable and entrapped Palestinian population, and and a symbol of the most vulnerable uh, portions of the country. And they. And so that when for those who, that who are, lo who are looking at this situation and pushing against Israel, they are defining the conflict in those terms. And the, question, and the question is, what's the fight about? We can advance Israel's brand, um, and, it, and in many places, in many, in many ways, it makes immense sense. It affects Israeli businesses, um, the, the country and its relations with other countries. There are many, many reasons why to address Israel's brand, but you can't avoid the conflict. That is, you can't say you're not part of this because the issues are too, you know, immediate. You have to decide what the fight's about. The, um, and if we, just, in our research, there are two things that have just always been true in saying what the, what, the, what the issue is about. Israel has been a country that at each critical point has been willing to make the compromises for peace. If you look at, surveys in Britain um, today and ask whether you think the Israeli public supports the two-state solution, overwhelmingly, they say do, they do not. Um, the, there is success in creating a perception that Israel, at, if you look at Israel, the poll by Bicom, the, on a question of, you know, of whether Israel has given up land for peace. Over, majority of Brit British voters believe that they, Israel has never given up land for peace. There's no history. In the conduct, yeah, yeah well, no, I mean, whose fault is it that they do not know that history? It's the obligation, obviously, of the communities that are pro-Israel community in Britain. It's our obligation to advance that history, to engage it. They, they're not fools for not knowing it. It's our it, job it to inform the them. It could be the BBC, <laughs> the Guardian, and the Independent, the, 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 the Independent, <laughs> not you. That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But you have to engage in the research. The, the one, you know, the one thing that we know that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, wherever you go, including the U.S., that Israel is a country that's been willing and as willing um, to make uh, make big choices for peace, and has been historically, and has currently, uh, and will in the future. Uh, and the second is that Israel is a democratic country. That there's a conflict between a country that has democratic values, and that include many things, include free press, include um, um, equality of groups within the country, it could be civic rights of all communities. All those things are central to it. But the question is, what is the struggle um, about? Um, you have to join that in order to, you know, advance it. I would just finish with the, and it goes back to the original concept of ideas. This has to be authentic. That is, the you don't win the marketing battle, you don't win the brand battle. Um, um, unless one, you have the, a strategy that has you, you know, engaging the fight on your terms and addressing the questions that uh, advance your standing. Um, but you also, but you also, reality has to, you have to, there has to be reality, you know, to this. Um, if I go to, if I look at the United States right now in the battle over the budget, and there's a battle in Britain, a battle over the budget, you know, you know, what's the main issue face, you know, you know, facing the United States? Is it the future of the middle class, or is it whether the United States as an indebted country is going to get its finances under control? Those are, what's the battle? What's the, you know, what is the, that's, deciding what the battle is will be critical, but both of those depend on a reality. The middle class is struggling, progressives have to have a way of dealing with that, the country is indebted, conservatives and progressives have a way of dealing with that. But that's, it's also true here. There has to be a reality. There has to be an ability to defend democratic values, an ability to argue that Israel is making the advances for peace, um, and then you can win the marketing battle um, if you have the authentic, the ideas, and the right fight. Thank you. Thank you very much.